Lee in Singapore writes to me and he asks, when I purchased my first amplifier that was above the usual electronic store amps, I opened it up and I was surprised that this heavy box of aluminum didn't actually contain much. The space inside was mostly air. And the more I looked at components, the more I see this isn't an unusual trait of my Canadian amplifier, but a large majority of hi-fi separates. So what gives? Is this an issue of looks, keeping each box the same shape, function, or just that most audiophiles tend to be men, and when something is expensive, we expect it to be substantial in terms of mass? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, th there is certainly some of that. I, I, will, I will tell you just a, a, a brief uh, story that I've probably shared before. I've probably shared all of my stories, but when we, year, oh geez, 20 years ago, when we first came out with a new line of power amps, and th these were beautifully built power amps, the, I mean, and they were full. They were chock full of, um, of stuff, but the top cover was made from fairly thin material. And it's kind of the same material that we use today, but this was fairly thin. It was probably thinner. And I am at LA International Airport. I've already sent, uh, I'm on my way to Hong Kong, Michael Wong, our distributor at Radar. And I'm going to do the dog and pony show, as we used to call it, where I wanted to introduce these new amplifiers and, and uh, you know, meet the Hong Kong Audio Society. And it's, you know, and I love Hong Kong. It's my favorite city in the whole world. And Michael had just received his first sample of the amplifier. And I'm sitting in the lounge at LA International Airport. There's maybe an hour before my plane takes off. Michael calls me in a panic and says, uh, don't come. I said, what do you mean don't come? I'm, you know, I just flew from Denver to, you know, he said, uh, this does not pass the knock-knock test. What? I'd never heard of a knock-knock test. And he said, yeah, all audiophiles, when they go buy equipment, they go to the top cover and they knock-knock, and they knock on the top. If it sounds thin and hollow, they won't buy it. If it's thick and conk conk and hurts their fingers, they'll buy it. Or at least they'll look at it, right? <laughs> we literally, I, I got on the phone. I said, Michael, I'm still coming. We'll fix the problem. So we literally stopped production. They were in powder coat. We took them to a machine shop. We had steel plates mounted inside the top cover. And I'm sure we were responsible for scraping quite a few knuckles because now it passed the knock-knock test. So yeah, there is some of that. <laughs> anyway, enough of the story. Um, a lot of modern equipment today is kind of empty, and I'm, there's a number of reasons why. If we go back in time, when hi-fi was in its infancy, it kind of came out from the consoles into separates. And when it did that, it adopted something called the rack mount size, which was a 17-inch chassis with a 19-inch front panel. And that came out of the pro industry because everything had to fit into these racks. And the racks were 17 inches wide, and they had screw holes along the side that you could mount a 19-inch panel. So everything we did back then was all, regardless of how much stuff was inside, you had to fill 17 inches, and we had what was called one U, one unit high, which is what, one and three quarter inches, I think, if I remember right, and two U, and they were all multiples of this one U height, and two U, three U, four U, and those were the standard sizes, and we all followed that, that uh, routine, and today, we still, the reason that these are 17 inches wide is because that's how it all kind of started. So anyway, that's how they got to be that size. And that's, and, and some people were kind of daring. We were some of the first. We made half size ones and anyway, big deal. Okay, if you look inside of our amplifiers, our big ones anyway, they are stuffed full and that's why they're heavy. And you can see the insides of one. Here's, here's the, the circuitry, these big heat sinks. And right in the middle, 
This is, of course, taken apart. This is, <laughs> there's a lot more stuff in there. There's vacuum tubes over here. There's a bunch of capacitors and even a power supply thing on top and this big giant transformer. So many products, including ours, are chock full of stuff on the inside. But some things like, for example, if you look at, here is our phono stage, okay? This is the inside of a phono stage. And there's a lot of stuff in here, but there's also a lot of empty space. Now, it has to be a certain size to accommodate the transformer, but, you know, again, you can look inside and say, well, that's kind of empty. It is, and it isn't. It has to be a certain size to accommodate the stuff, but then also, it's a standard size for us. So when you line everything up, it all looks the same height. And we do that on purpose. So anyway, just a little, oh, yay. it ain't light. And it passes the knock-knock test. So um, there's a little bit of history for you. Hope that answers your question. Thanks. Bye.